always like to know ma'am and these are the less talked about topics yeah. because uh, whether we we see a successful practitioner always see is that they are a successful a successful practitioner but the kind of sacrifices that they have to do they need to be highlighted and especially for females in the industry like that mm-hmm. it's it's very very important but you can have multiple things that kind of feed into it mm-hmm. you prioritize but you can't be you know a butterfly yeah, picking yeah, you know yeah. equally prioritizing 15 different things that it doesn't not only been managing the corporate side of your uh, practice but i i'm sure as you shared earlier that you started somewhere from litigation as well some parts of litigation some parts of disputes and what not greetings to everybody who's watching with me is present a very illustrious person somebody that i in the recent times came to know of and became totally mesmerized with for multiple reasons that you'll know henceforth allow me to introduce ma'am miss goda uh, miss goda raghavan who is an individual who practices as a corporate lawyer heads the practice at as ak at ak law chambers and is also a mother of two is a veena player is very interested in mu- music is and also has a comic strip of her own she graduated from university law college bangalore in 2010 and has been practicing ever since she also holds a masters degree from london school of economics and ma'am is here with us and uh, at, at the outset the only question that pops up in my mind as i went through your instagram profile you are very present on the social media and you put such uh insightful uh, insightful content on the social media ma'am your bio read balance it out <laughs> so that's my question for you how does being a mother how does be having such personal interest how is it possible for you to balance it out up also also having such a busy corporate law career thanks that was a great uh, introduction um I think if you want to do something you will do it that's the simplest thing if you want to do a certain thing there are sacrifices um i would say maybe on the personal front front there are sacrifices i would probably want to be in two other places um i probably want to spend more time with say you know my sibling or you know my parent or my spouse or so even friends or whatever but there are certain sacrifices that that come along the way if you want to do a certain thing you will always make time for it mm-hmm. um i have in the recent past barely watched any tv any show any um you know literally almost zero uh, content on the internet <laughs> but that being said i think the um the the the, the uh, i'm struggling for the word but I think the uh, the the challenge that comes with a uh, private practice is that you are you need to be always available. Mm-hmm. It's not a 9 uh, to say 7 or 8 o'clock where you go back home and you're done. Mm-hmm. You don't respond to emails. One email that does not get answered is one client lost and nobody is indispensable. when everybody a client will find somebody else but if you want to build that niche for yourself you want to be there at the same time you don't want to miss out let's say your child's um you know some event at school or um, somebody is not well at home you need to be there but how do you balance it you you just have to do it there have been times where i was in a transaction closing this was for a listed company a transaction closing which started on a friday evening with a mandate that on monday morning we have to file our uh, disclosures with sebi so that was that was the deadline which could not be moved through the weekend my kids have classes back to back one after the other now who does all of this right so <laughs> literally driving them from point a to point b on a call for and those negotiations went on for 17 18 hours a day I'm very blessed with a great team right uh when I pick my team they're like family to me so I believe in investing my time to train uh my team so that I can do all of these other things they are, they respond to my clients wherever my you know my uh intervention is required I come in 
but that's how it that's how it works that's how you balance you put your team together you ensure that you know a certain system works it works the way it works are there judgments on the way a million judgments i mean <laughs> there is no dearth for judgment everybody has a point of view somebody in your office does not understand why you have to leave at 3 o'clock in the afternoon but they do not understand that when you left at 3 o'clock in the afternoon you've still worked till 2 in the morning to make up for those 2 hours that you had to go you know meet somebody or pick up your child from school or whatever it is but i guess it's about um if you want to do a certain thing irrespective of of what uh, it is it's not i'm not specifically talking about my career practice because somewhere i feel that as a lawyer if you drop out of the race it's very difficult to come back into the race it's very difficult even when you take um i remember you know through delivering my second child we were in the middle of of a transaction i was on call literally 24 hours before i was back to responding to emails two days later uh it's not did it matter it mattered to me and that's all that's important i did not want to feel like um i had lost my own self confidence to be able to speak to my client with that sense of authority so therefore i did not want that break so you want to do it 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 happens that way um so glad to know ma'am and these are the less it talked about topics yeah. because um, whether we we see a successful practitioner always says that they are a successful a successful practitioner but the kind of sacrifices that they have to do they need to be highlighted especially for females in the industry that's yeah. true um coming on to that given that you have had a varied experience uh you've not only been managing the corporate side of your uh, practice but i'm sure as you shared earlier that you started somewhere from litigation as well some parts of litigation some parts of disputes and what not but for an aspirant for a young aspirant who wants to enter corporate law and wants to have a successful practice in that what is your advice especially let's say for a learner in their fourth year or fifth year yeah. and nowadays there has been a trend that people are trying to acquire multiple credentials to their name they are trying to fetch uh, secretarial degrees uh, they are doing the cs course some are also doing the chartered accountancy course so are those really necessary are those the demand of the time do we need to game uh, up yeah. our games yeah. yeah or we can do without it what are your thoughts ma'am okay so there are two things one is how do you enter uh, you know a corporate law practice according to me i think finding the right mentor is everything according to me getting the right mentor is um, is the most important thing my mentor mr tk baskar the way he gave me the kind of importance to handle the work made me literally fall in love with uh, this this area of work when i stepped out to set up uh, you know my own practice while i somewhere felt that you know yes i this you know corporate law is what i kind of wanted to do but when you start off you take everything that comes your way right so as a student i would first say do your internships in up to say fourth year probably do a mixed internship try out every area of law but in that one month it's very difficult to really say whether you like a certain area of law or you don't like that practice too much or whether it's your thing or not some you can very easily say that yeah but there are several which kind of sit on the fence and you're not too sure whether that's your cup of tea or not um in your final year you would probably be i would advise to invest yourself in the area of law that you think you want to do so you have about 3 internships finally when you graduate in that particular area of law so just talking from a you know an employer point of view if i see a fresher who has done three corporate internships who has seen what is a shareholders agreement who has probably been part of a due diligence process automatically i'm inclined to pick that cv over somebody who has done maybe you know five more internships than this first cv but they may or may not be uh, connected right so that's somewhere i feel that you know you need to somehow channelize towards the end of your uh, law school okay. to say okay this is some my area of interest and therefore i will do few more internships 
Now, what is the um, and once you do that and you apply to a firm where not only do they do the area of work that you're interested in, but again, at the cost of repeating myself, your mentor is or your first boss is extremely important. They can make or break your love for that particular uh, area of practice. Um, the next thing you asked me was about you know the additional qualifications or uh, the additional degrees. If you are collecting degrees for the purpose of putting it below your name, I'm not sure in any course, it's not about law, but any any degree, uh, if it's going to have any value, right? But each of these degrees have a value, add, they definitely have a value to it, which you bring to the table um, from two points of view. One is practically when you are, uh, let's say, advising on a particular transaction, Every transaction involves three components. One is the finance side of it, where you ascertain, let's say, the value of a business, the share price, am I paying the right price for the right value, how to read a balance sheet. Because as corporate lawyers, we tend to end up reading balance sheets. Because when we do a due diligence, if the liability side says, you know, this is the value, then suddenly you see secured creditors, you see unsecured creditors. You know automatically under secured creditors, you want to look at the documentation of the secured creditor. So you have to look at the balance, you should know how to look at it. And uh, I mean, I don't know how much exposure we get in your routine five-year law program into reading a balance sheet, right? Similarly, that's the financial aspect of a, a corporate transaction. Then there's a legal part, which is your, uh, which we are all trained or, you know, being trained to do. Then there's a third aspect, which is the uh, secretarial part of it, right? Which you have to advise the client. You cannot be both a lawyer and a company secretary in the sense that if you want to practice law, you cannot get a certificate of practice as a company secretary, which means you cannot file the forms that are necessary to be filed. Nevertheless, you still have to tell your client that these forms have to be filed or when you're doing the due diligence, you should know that these forms should have been filed because you're the one checking. You're the one to say, okay, this is what has been done. Sometimes transactions are structured on the basis of what form has to be filed at what time. So, so these, um, what you learn, for example, because you gave the example of a, uh, you know, the CA course, what you learn there will never come in an LLB degree. What you learn as a CS will not come in the, the LLB and vice versa also. So there is, according to me, a, a big value add, and which I can see because as a lawyer, we do not learn what forms to file. I mean, you you learn it, but that's not uh, the main area or the core area of your practice. You do not learn to read a balance sheet, but there are parts of the companies that which refer to procedural parts. How will you know? How will you know it? How will you be able to? So just to get a holistic approach, that is one thing. That's on the practical side. But the other thing is, if you were pitching to a client and telling the client that, you know, I the firm has, you know, the client has two firm profiles or two lawyer profiles, who do I give the work to? Who do you pick, right? So obviously they would say, oh, this person has X, Y, Z qualifications. So therefore, so I wouldn't say that it's just an add-on. I think there is definitely a tangible benefit. In this. Uh, that's very insightful, ma'am. And rightly pointed out, like reading something and applying it definitely has to be the intention yeah. Yeah. for reading it. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And um, lastly, ma'am, the question, another question that I had in my mind was with you being so multifaceted, not only in your personal interests, ha but also in your academic journey, you also hold a master's degree from London School of Economics. Mm -hmm. Have your personal interests helped you keeping your professional interest intact? or intact yeah. like do you want uh, as a corporate lawyer it is a general perception that you are very busy you're always occupied and uh, do they serve as a as an exit or how how important is it to have other interests in life i think they go hand in hand i think there's a discipline that you get so i play the vena and my mother introduced this to me when i was three years old um, she was very particular about two things. She said, you have to learn your music and you have to learn how to pray. So, these are the only two things which will hold you on, right? There's a discipline that I learned in uh, being a Veena artist to be able to sit down and focus. It's not, and I mean, it's not about what do I do with the art of playing an instrument. 
it is about the discipline of being able to sit down in one place and focus on a particular thing for me um i'm also very interested in art so i i take art classes now every sunday because i find that as you know this me time you know i sit down one hour no emails no pick <laughs> not picking up anybody's phone calls um literally no family no friends nothing it's just me and you know my teacher who's doing and teaching me and my art book but these are little things that that help you and you come back rejuvenated on a monday morning it's but it's not that you switched off on the sunday because on, as a private practice you are always answerable there is uh, uh, i mean if your junior calls and says i'm not well for two days but you have to respond to that email right and you can't well sometimes yes it's possible to say but it doesn't happen and there are certain things that that have a strict deadline and it cannot work any other way no nothing is an excuse so even when you're on a vacation you're you're responding there is today i think it's become like that now that it's it's always demanding but personally i'm very lucky to be in the corporate law space because time is flexible I'm able to manage my meetings in a way that uh, work for me. I'm able to be in multiple places of equal importance. I have to be at the meeting. I'm there on call. Maybe I have to be at school with you know my child. I'm there. I, I probably have say you know an errand to run. But it's not that I'm sacrificing one for the other. Uh, touch wood. I think I found a very comfortable space for myself. just because you have other hobbies or activities it doesn't make you less focused on your career actually to the contrary it makes you learn how to multitask it it's 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 enabling right and uh, you don't have to choose that you want to do one or the other but if you're determined that i am going to make a name for myself i am going to be this person and and i will make this happen come what may um you know all everything just adds up everything just kind of falls in place everything becomes uh, enabling yes coming like almost as if you answered the first question that like, yeah. if you want to do it you will do it yeah. anyhow yeah and yeah. i uh, and i'm sure the listeners who who are listening to this are taking notes as to this as to you being a splendid example as to how this this life cannot just be about one thing cannot just be about one profession oh, you can thing. have a very i mean i won't say one thing it's very important to have a main thing i mean yeah. it's yeah. it's very very important but you can have multiple things that kind of feed into it mm. you prioritize but you can't be you know a butterfly yeah. picking yeah. you know yeah. equally prioritizing 15 different things it doesn't so you have to balance it all yeah. <laughs> as it goes and uh, Yeah having said that I will also go back to the recording and take notes <laughs> and and the insights that you have shared ma'am thank you so much it has been a pleasure having you over having listened to you in the session now and we hope that we have future collaborations like these with you it's always a pleasure speaking with uh, students and guiding them thank you thank, thank you, you ma'am thank you <laughs>